refurbishing a vintage model steamboat part 19 and it's the new boiler live steam test. This boiler's had a hydraulic test by the manufacturer and it's time now to try it on steam. I'm doing this live steam test outside of the boat because I forget any problems that can be easily rectified. When the boiler's inside the boat it's going to be a very fiddly job getting my very large hands into the boat to adjust anything. And as you can see at the moment I'm doing the important thing, filling the boiler with water. This old funnel is something I modified several years ago. It has a fitting that screws into one of the boiler bushes. And in no time at all the water's climbing up the water gauge. And here we go, this is the last bit. All this excitement is just too much on a Wednesday morning. And there we go, the boiler is full. Time now to fit the safety valve, not forgetting the copper washer. And in goes the safety valve. And now I'm putting the steam tap in the other bush. This steam tap, when it's finally in the boat, needs to point to one side, because I've already made the piping to feed the superheater. But for this steam test it's unimportant, so I'm just tightening it down onto an existing copper washer. When I put it in the boat, I will have to use a shim washer to get it in precisely the right position. You have to know how far to go with these fittings. You must never over tighten them. If you should be too heavy handed and over tighten the fittings, you run the risk of either shearing off the fitting, or worse still, stripping the thread in the boiler bush. So both of these scenarios really do need to be avoided. This is a butane propane mixed gas tank that's going in the boat. These are commercial items and can be bought from many sources. When the steam plant is installed in the boat, it will of course be piped properly with copper pipe. This piping that I'm using is just a temporary measure. In this clip I'm lighting the burner, or attempting to light the burner, with this gadget that I light my blowtorch with. When lighting the burner, make sure that the gas pressure is kept low. If it's too high, it will tend to blow out and splutter. And also, make sure that you don't turn up the gas burner to start with, because you do not want lots of heat going into a cold boiler. It's not good for the boiler. I'm sure there must be some experts out there saying, why is he using a blowtorch? Why not a ceramic burner? They're much quieter. Well, yes, they are indeed much quieter, apart from the howling noise you get with them through the flue tube. And I also prefer a burner like this because it seems to give a bit more heat and it's definitely a period thing. This is a very old boat and initially it had a petrol or paraffin burner in it. So a blowtorch like this is the next best thing to the authenticity of the model. And in no time at all, the burner blowing into the flue tube of the boiler is raising steam very well. Not a lot of pressure, 30 psi and climbing. At just under 40 pounds per square inch pressure, I can see some steam in an area of the boiler where there shouldn't be any. The only place there should be steam around the boiler is from the safety valve or the tap, which is the main outlet. This steam is not a good sign. So we've got 40 psi on the clock and there is steam escaping from somewhere. And as the pressure starts to rise, there's more steam. In fact, there's quite a lot of steam at the moment. It's a bit like a sauna in here. So I'd better quickly put my clothes back on and see what it is. Aha! It is a leak from the water gauge. At this point I would like to say, April, May, June, July, August and September fool, I've done this on purpose to just illustrate a point. The big cross is saying, not a good idea to do this when there is pressure inside the boiler, not to mention the fact that the water is boiling. So drop the pressure, fix the problem and then relight the boiler. I replaced the water gauge because I broke it in the last episode by putting the boiler in and out of the boat. And what I did was I left the top nut purposely slack. So as the pressure climbed, it started to leak. You must never over tighten the water gauge nuts though because they can crack the glass. Sometimes you can get away with them being finger tight, other times they just need nipping up. Anyway, the water gauge is now watertight and steam tight. And if you look at the pressure gauge, you'll see that it's just about to reach a pressure of 70 pounds per square inch. I want this boiler to blow off at 70 pounds per square inch, so I'm about to adjust the safety valve whilst the boiler is in steam, which is the best way to do it. First of all, I undo the locking ring, that's the outer ring, and then I rotate the inner ring in an anti-clockwise position until the safety valve blows off. 
taking great care not to get my hand in the jet of steam, which of course is very hot and can cause injury. I would normally use a right angled pair of circlet pliers, which would mean that my hand is well cleared of the safety valve, but for the purposes of the video, I use this pair, because it allows me to show the process more clearly. Normally with a new boiler, the first steam test can be a bit of a disaster, for various reasons, leaking gauge glasses, broken gauge glasses, or generally leaky fittings, but in this case this boiler is very good indeed, and it didn't prime, Priming is quite common in new boilers. There are usually some products of the soldering process inside the boiler. So when you first raise steam, what happens is, as the steam blows out of the safety valve, it lifts the water with it. And you really do get a shower bath. And likewise, by opening the steam tap, you'd get a mixture of steam and water coming out of the pipe. A little water is coming out of this pipe, but that's because it is wet steam and it's quite a long pipe. That's it for this episode, thanks for watching, and once again I hope you found it useful.